Hey y'all, insight number three here. So we're in chapter 12 in Acts for this one. Um, now I already had this written out and I apologize to both Emily and Emily Freeman and David Butler because they called it the same thing. So both thinking along the same lines. I actually did have this one written out first. So sometimes you're going to get a sword and sometimes you're going to get an angel and they said the same thing. And I'm like, awesome. That's right. That's okay. I'm still going to go with it because if they're going to teach it as well, then I'm on the right track. I'm just going to call it that. But anyway, I'm sure other people will come up with it as well. I think John Hilton's probably going to talk about it and you'll probably hear from Come Follow Me Daily and Come Follow Me Podcast about the same thing. You never know. And it's just a really interesting way here that sometimes the harsh thing has to happen for you and sometimes you're going to get the angel, but it doesn't mean that one's better than the other. It's just different. So... This is the martyrdom of James. So James, as in John's brother, James, gets killed. So this is Herod, um, the king, stretched forth his hand, the vexed certain of the church, because he's just like, because remember, they're all being hunted down at this point. They're all being hidden and careful because they know that they want to eradicate them. Um, and when they kill off Jesus, they think that's going to be done. We talked about that, and it's not. There's just more people joining the church. It made it more popular. Um, and they're like, oh man really so now they're hunting down the leaders so they get James um, and he gets killed by the sword so um, in verse 3 it says and when when Herod this is talking about Herod and because he saw it pleased the Jews he proceeded further to take Peter also um, then were the days of unleavened bread so it's it's right up into that um, oh, I can't think of the name of the end of the week Passover thank you Passover um, but in verse 4 it says, And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him four quaternions of soldiers to keep him. Um, and if you look at the footnote for that, it, um, where does that go? Four, no, I can't, can't figure it. Four B, four B, quads, squads, detachments of four men each. So there's 16 men there, quaternions, 16 men uh, of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. So, now it's been called Easter. So this is obviously a year, maybe even two, after Christ had gone. So this is like that celebration of Christ passing. Or for if you were still Jewish, you have Passover where it's not Easter because Christ didn't rise for them. It was just a prophet. So it's But it's that time of year. So he's in prison and he's like, okay, I'm going to kill him after this holiday because I can't kill him in the holiday, you know. It's not the people there. It's like, you know, everyone's gone on holiday. They've, they've got, but they've got guards watching him. He's not going anywhere. <laughs> right. Uh, Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing from the church unto God for him. Because remember, Peter is their head. He's their prophet at this point in time. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. So he's literally chained to two other guys, and then there's like other guards outside the door. Um, and in verse 7, And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side, like, come on, raise up, get up quickly, rise quickly. And the chains fell from his, his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind up, bind on the sandals, and you get like, get dressed, get up, let's go. Um, and he follows them out, and thinking, was that not true? This was done by an angel. He sort of in a vision. He's like, he's, you know, when you get woken up, he's like, was that a dream? Is this happening? Like, it's real. It's happening. Um, and when they were past the first and second ward, they came into the iron gate that leadeth into the city, which opened out, opened to them of his own accord. So it like opened for them, like miraculously opened for them. And they went out and passed on through one street and forthwith the angel departed from him. Basically, off you go then. I got you out of prison. And Peter says, came to himself, like this is like waking up properly, comes to himself and says, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, and many were gathered together praying. So they're still praying for him. Now it goes on to talk about um, how they find him there and they thought it was a ghost and yeah, was just, yeah, they thought, like, oh, that can't be true, and Rhoda is amazing, she's lovely, she's like, no, he's there, he's there, I swear he's there, and they're all like, what, and like, well, just go answer the door already, right, um, I basically, they saw him, and they're all excited about it, and of course, Herod is, it says, highly displeased, 
um, he's pretty bad because, like, how does this guy get out of prison? He was chained to two other men, and they had men round about him, and they, like, don't even notice he's missing. Is, is How did he get out, right? It's like, well, because God let him out. Hello. Um, but there you go. So, in this chapter, though, we see James killed by a sword, and Peter arrested, then rescued by an angel. So sometimes you're going to get the sword. Sometimes that's your destiny. That's what's going to happen. And other times you'll get rescued because you've still got work to do. And that's the case here. Um, and, and James has got work to do on the other side. It's, you know, it's fine. It's just different. Um, so again, we do not know God's bigger plan. And sometimes we get a rescue. Often, actually, we get a rescue. But sometimes we are called home. We have work in both places, just different circumstances. So have you seen this in your life? Because I have. Um, I've had to learn to be happy with the rescue because I wanted the calling home. Being here and being rescued is hard and it's daily pain for me. Being called home would mean no pain. It's still work, but the Lord needed me here. I'm still here. Um, my kind of adopted aunt at the time, also wanted to go home, and she got to go home, um, and she's missed, and I'd still like her here, but she's gone home, she's working over there, so sometimes you get the sword, sometimes you get called home, and sometimes you get off rescued here, in fact, most often you get rescued here, um, so it's about trusting Jesus and not our limited understanding, we get what makes us the best us, I had more growing to do, and I think she was at the point where she was done. I really do feel that. Um, so sometimes a sword, sometimes an angel. Yet the best, yet there is rest and reprieve in both. And there is. Um, there's, there's rest and reprieve from leaving this mortal coil where everything hurts and is bright and hard and emotional and lost and all so many different things. But there's also rest and reprieve and being sent an angel to exist here still. So there's rest and reprieve in both places. And sometimes we get one and sometimes we get the other. More often, as I said, we get the rescue. Even though it might not be a literal angel, it might be someone else who helps us. That's not often these days we end up in prison, chained between two men. But that could still happen. Um, I don't really hear of it amongst my friends. But, you know... <laughs> It could still happen so keep that in mind and it's again that thing you know like why does that one person get saved and the other one doesn't why does that one person get cancer and the other one doesn't and why does that one person survive cancer and the other one doesn't and we don't know that's just the simple thing of it some of us have more learning and growth to do on this earth and some do not um and we don't know that bigger plan and we just need to trust the lord that he's got the bigger plan down and that there is rest and reprieve in both circumstances, whatever it might be, uh, and to find some peace in that instead. So there you go. Thoughts on that one. All right, we're going to move on. We're going to go over to Acts 13, I believe. No, Acts 14. We're missing Acts 13. What was in Acts 13? We've got a few minutes here. Let's briefly check. Oh, yes, Saul and Barnabas called to missionary service. So it's basically a discussion about who's going to be missionaries together and what they're going to go and do, and then they go out preaching. So have a read of that, but um, nothing particularly poignant for this week's topic, if you will. Um, just good content. Anyway, hang around. We're going to be in Acts 14 for the next one. I'll see you there.